So, okay, so recently on YouTube, I've been um, recording some fairly heavy lectures on um, point set topology. And so I thought as a little bit of a break, I'd do a video on some of the more fun sides of topology. So I've decided to make this little video where we're going to look at three really fun things which you can make. Um, fun topological objects which you can make really quickly out of household objects. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to make a Mobius strip out of a trefoil knot. So what you need is some wire so you can um, twist up the wire into a trefoil knot a uh, trefoil knot is this thing showed in blue on the left. It's really the simplest kind of knot. And you're going to need some blue tack or some Play-Doh or something so that you can um, stretch it around the knot. Now, the next project is along the same kind of lines, but it's a bit more interesting. Um, what we're going to do there is... Um, Using some wire, we're going to make some Borromean rings. Now, Borromean rings are um, a famous, very interesting kind of thing where you have three rings, no two of which are connected, but um, all three of them together are connected. So that's a kind of interesting thing in itself. But what I'm going to show you is how to make the so-called Seafrit surface out of the Borromean rings and again that just involves nothing but using a bit of wire and a bit of play-doh and a little bit of time and finally um, since I just couldn't resist um, one of my favorite all-time play-doh play or plasticine constructions is of course the projective plane so I'm going to show you how to make a projective plane, or more precisely, a cross cap out of Play-Doh. So um, these are three really fun, really important topological objects. And so I hope you enjoy learning about how to make them. And to be honest, I really hope you make versions of these things yourself. So. If you've seen a few knots before, you probably recognize this. If I hold it still, as the trefoil knot. Okay, this is the trefoil knot. It goes around here, under here, over here, under here, back over here, and around here, and under here. So, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to build a surface out of this knot, and we're going to do this with the very kind of natural idea of just placing surfaces between these kind of rings which are sort of parallel to each other and we're just going to see what kind of surface we end up with so it seems a bit ad hoc um, there are more sophisticated theories about how to do this but Let's just look at it from a simplistic point of view. So we're going to start gluing white Play-Doh um, between these separate pieces of wire. Now look what's happening here. This was a part of our trefoil where two of these lines crossed. So if we just rotate everything round a little bit, what we can see is that what we're actually have, having here is that this white surface which is sort of been induced between the two different wires is twisting and that's good we like we like twisted surfaces so let's carry on and it's twisting again So let's carry on.
The point I'm really trying to get across here is that if you take a load of disjoint loops and um, you create these surfaces between them, or if you create some knots and you look at the surfaces, you find some very, very interesting things. Um, and there's a whole theory of this which sort of tells you things about how you can create new surfaces and also tells you things about graph theory itself. Sorry, about uh, knot theory itself. So it's quite a lucrative subject all round. But anyway, here we are getting close to the end. Um, it seems as though something's gone a bit awry up here. Let's just check this is okay. Right, so we've got one more twist. No? No, it looks like it's all plain sailing from here on. Have we got another twist here? No, we don't. Okay, it's all... It's all plain sailing. Right then. So what is this surface which we have just created? So this is essentially the surface we've got by filling in nearby parts of our trefoil knot. The trefoil being the simplest unknot, the simplest uh, non-trivial knot. So what is this shape? Well it certainly has an echo of a Mobius strip. So is it a Mobius strip? Let's have a look. Okay then, so here's our completed trefoil. Now, um, I there was a few little mistakes I made when I was filling this in from the wireframe, but I've got them corrected now. And um, this seems like it's quite right, because there are, in the trefoil there are three crossings of the loops. And in this um, in this surface here, there are three of these places where the surface sort of changes round. Okay, so one of them is here. It's a fairly aggressive changeover. And another one is here, where it changes orientation. And another one is here. So, um, with three different changes of orientation, um, that's kind of equivalent to one change of orientation, which means that this is a Mobius strip. But, um, don't take my word for it. Let's just do a tiny experiment just to make sure this is, is indeed a Mobius strip. So we'll put a little mount in here and then we'll imagine that we have some adventurer who's going to walk off in this direction. So um, here they go. They walk along here and then they get looped upside down and then they're walking upside down on this bit and then turning around again and then they're the correct way around and then they're turning around again so now they're on the opposite side of this mountain and if they carry on walking they'll get rotated back round and they'll get rotated back round again and back round again and back round the mountain they come. So it takes two, true, true, uh, two complete traversals of this thing 
to get back where you started from and be properly orientated. Okay then, so here's an example of something called a Seafrit surface. So have a good look at it. It has a kind of threefold symmetry um, in the sense that it has these different twists. Um, like here, there's a kind of T-shaped twist, and there's another one here and another one here. So there's three of these different T-shaped twists. Um, now, if you remember earlier on, I showed you a Mobius strip. It was actually a um, 1.5 twisted Mobius strip. Um, and the way I got that was to get a tre trefoil knot and then to um, fill in the thing with a surface. And it turns out that this seat free surface, by the way, this isn't the only seat free surface, this is just a special one. But it turns out that this was generated in a rather similar way. And so um, if I now push away and destroy this model, which is quite upsetting to me since um, I've had it around for quite a while, but I'll do it in the name of demonstration. So let me pull off all of this plasticine. it off there we go Okay, is that enough? Hopefully that's enough for you, be able to, for you to be able to see the kind of skeleton beneath this structure. So what is it made out of? What's the underlying thing? Well, what it actually is is another very interesting thing which is sort of related to knot theory, although not exactly. Okay then, so here's a sort of rearrangement of the thing that we get. So you should be able to see better that this is the Borromean rings. Now, for those of you that don't know what the Borromean rings are, let's just go through it. Start with this ring here, okay? So it goes over this bottom left ring, then it goes under this top ring, then it goes over this bottom right ring, then it goes under this top right ring, and that's what it does. So, actually, if you look at this for a while, you should convince yourself that all of these three rings are sort of symmetric in the way that they relate to one another. Now, the really interesting thing here, I think, is... Just, okay, forget about all this white tack. This shouldn't be here. But um, just look at this ring here and think about it for a second. Is it connected to this ring here? In other words, if this ring on the right didn't exist, would these two rings on the top and the bottom be connected to each other? Well, no, they wouldn't, right? Because only this ring just up across is this one. So if the third ring wasn't here, you could just pull these two apart. And that's a fascinating thing about the Borromean rings. The three of them are 
impossible to pull apart, but if you remove any one of them, then it's easy to pull the other two apart. So this is really a very interesting structure. Um, let me show you a more stylized diagram of the bromine rings. Okay, so now I'm going to have a go at making a cross cap. So what is a cross cap? Well, basically, it's, um, it's kind of like a Mobius strip, except that the boundary is really looks like a circle. But the problem with it is that it does actually have a self-intersection. Now, the way that we do it is if we make two sort of craters like this then we want to actually make one of these what's called a cross cap so we're going to tear the surface here so we've got this bit left and we're also going to tear the surface at the other side so we've got these two kind of three pieces of surface now and we're just going to join those together. Now we also have these other two pieces of surface from our tear at the other side and we're going to join those together as well. And now what we're going to do is imagine that this surface is just joined to this surface and this one's joined to this one. So this is not physically possible in 3D space, but it doesn't stop us from visualizing it. Um, and something like this would obviously be easily possible in 4D space. Um, now, as I said, we want to actually have it so that we actually have a circular boundary. Okay, so at the moment we have this kind of figure eight boundary, whereas we want to have a circular boundary for this to be a cross cap. But that's not really a problem because all we have to do is just stretch up these walls a little bit. Um, and you can see that although there is a cross below, um, what's going on above here is actually that we've got a proper loop. And we can make it more and more loop-like. So we've actually now got a true circle. A true, well, a true loop above this sort of place where we have our crossing. And then, of course, we could get something like a sphere, and um, we could cut a hole in our sphere, and we could sew the, um, well, if it, okay, if there's some small holes in this, they're just defects because the blue tack is a bit difficult to work with, but technically we could sew on this this thing onto our sphere and this would be essentially the same as well it'd be equivalent well it would be analogous let's say to attaching handles to a um, to a sphere okay so if you want to increase the genus of a sphere the number of holes it has you attach a handle to it if you want to make a sphere um, non-orientable you attach a cross cap to it and this is basically what a cross cap is. And so hopefully this has been illustrative to you. And you can see, um, although it's difficult to truly represent what a cross cap is in 3D space, you can have a good go and it's quite a fun exercise to try it with something like plasticine or blue tack. Actually I recommend blue tack, it's a bit easier to use.